And now news from around the world and meanwhile in. Meanwhile in Germany, a Nobel Peace Prize winner is calling for ISIS fighters to be tried like the Nazis were in public to make clear what it is exactly that they've done. Uh, you might recall that uh, tragically ISIS fighters seized villages in Sinjar in Iraq back in 2014, slaughtering a number of Yazidi men and boys before abducting women and girls to be used as sex slaves. Nadia Murad was kidnapped from the village of Kocho in Sinjar and held by ISIS for three months before she managed to escape. Now she lives in Germany and she's the founder of Nadia's Initiative, an organization dedicated to quote, rebuilding communities in crisis and advocating for survivors of sexual violence. For her efforts and the experience that she underwent back in 2018, she won the Nobel Peace Prize for fighting to end efforts to use sexual violence as a weapon of war. And now with the profile that she has, She's advocating for a change in how ISIS fighters are eventually tried, saying, the death of al-Baghdadi is welcoming news for the world, especially for those communities that were targeted by ISIS. Baghdadi died as he lived, a coward using children as a shield. Let today be the beginning of a global fight to bring ISIS to justice. So very clearly a beginning, not an end. Those captured alive need to be brought to justice in an open court for the world to see. Justice is the only acceptable course of action. We must unite and hold ISIS terrorists accountable in the same way the world tried the Nazis in an open court at the Nuremberg trials. And so that is obviously a fascinating idea. I have not heard of that actually being pursued right now. But there is something to it, especially considering the nature of ISIS. ISIS is unlike other terror groups in that their goal was never to simply exist in the shadows and then strike out against their ideological opponents. They had a goal, it was a geographic governmental goal. They sought to create their own caliphate and to rule. And so, similar to in other cases where regimes were run by war criminals and people who had committed massive human rights assaults. Um, why not try them before the entire world? Why not make clear what it is that they did? And don't allow people who might share some sort of strategic or tactical affiliation with ISIS to actually hide from the horrible human rights atrocities that they were responsible for. It certainly worked with the Nazis, maybe something like it could work in this case as well. And uh, thank you to Nadia Murad to con for continuing to advocate uh, for justice in every, every area that she can. Meanwhile, in. In Sweden, Greta Thunberg has been awarded an environmental award with a cash prize for her efforts. And in response, she has said, no, I don't want it. And she explained why. She said, I have received the Nordic Council's environmental award in 2019. I have decided to decline this prize, here's why. The climate movement does not need any more awards. What we need is for our politicians and the people in power to start to listen to the current best available science. The Nordic countries have a great reputation around the world when it comes to climate and environmental issues. There's no lack of bragging about this. There's no lack of beautiful words. But when it comes to our actual emissions and our ecological footprints per capita, if we include our consumption, our imports, as well as aviation and shipping, then it's a whole other story. So until you start to act in accordance with what the science says is needed to limit the global temperature rise below 1.5 degrees or even two degrees Celsius, I and Fridays for Future in Sweden choose not to accept the Nordic Council's environmental award, nor the prize money of 500,000 Swedish kroner. Best wishes, Greta Thunberg. That's strong, I mean, especially considering it's money. But her response showed not only like sort of like courage and integrity, but also again, a sophistication of the material that she's advocating for beyond what most adults would be able to manage. So great job there and Greta for um, both when you're being attacked, but even when you're being lauded for sticking to your principles there. Meanwhile, in. Meanwhile, in the oceans, they are arising and apparently rising worse than we thought. A new study shows that more than three times as many people are in direct peril from rising oceans than previously considered. Take a look at a comparison with the old data and the new data. Here is Vietnam, where 20 million people live. You can see that it was always going to be bad for them as the oceans rose, but in the end, there is not going to be much of the entire country left once the oceans are done. Heading over to Bangkok, you can see a very similar story. It was going to be bad, it is going to be devastating by 2050. On to Shanghai, where obviously many, many people live. Let's jump to Shanghai here. 
you can see that area again will be decimated. Best case scenario becomes an archipelago effectively where millions and millions of people will have to flee ahead of the changes in Mumbai too, another heavily populated area. It didn't look too bad except for the outlying areas, but where Mumbai now stands an ocean will soon stand. This is devastating and by the way, even this as is always the case, it's kind of an understatement because they're not even factoring for population growth between now and 2015 or coastal erosion. This is simply changing ocean levels. So as bad as that looks, it's gonna be worse. And I've looked here in the US as well, New Orleans is going to be gone. Miami is going to be devastated. All of this is going to happen and it is going to cause utter chaos. Let's try to limit it to utter chaos and not move beyond that to an actual apocalypse. Thank you for watching this clip from the Damage Report. For more content from the show and access to TYT Network members only exclusives, go to tyt.com slash Brooke. Wait, no, it's tyt.com slash John. Go to tyt.com slash John to sign up.